this week on Lucky Fish. We take a look at some tricks that may help you stay in control when your boat starts surfing. And begin our passage north with Joe. One more string. <laughs> and soon we'll be talking like Arr! Yeah. <laughs> well, luckily, no one's in hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoying the 25 to 30 mile an hour uh, wind. Yeah, yeah. We've got some breeze out here. We just came out into the sound side. Put a few miles north and get round a couple of obstructions on the bank side after leaving Georgetown this morning or Stocking Island, wasn't it? Where there was about two or three hundred boats pretty protected in there but we thought we'd come out here and make some ground north while we've got this good good wind a few seas around it's been a bit lumpy because we haven't got very far away from the coast now we're about to go through Darling Cut and back inside the sound it's been pretty comfortable we're just sailing with the jib about 70 percent jib and um, doing only five or six knots or so we had timed our departure from Stocking Island in order to make Darling Cut before high tide. This way, the tidal flow was still in the direction of the wind, flooding from the ocean or sound side through the cuts and out onto the banks. Darling Cut is one of the shallower cuts, meaning the speed of the flow is quite high. Deeper, wider cuts with slower flows lie further north, but we would arrive to them too late, and they would be impassable, with wind against an ebbing tide, heaping up terrible seas. So we committed to run Darling Cut, and we found ourselves arriving about an hour before high tide. Our mic with the dead cat couldn't cope with the wind, so I'll explain what was going on here. The cut looked pretty narrow from out at sea, and required a bit of faith that it would become more clear as we got closer. We needed to jibe the jib at the right time to place the boat on the new ley line for the cut. When jibing in these conditions, it's important to have complete control of the timing and make very deliberate actions. You must have the mindset that you are the master of the boat, not the other way around. When the new lay line approaches and you are ready to jibe, you want the boat travelling at the highest speed. Wait for a moment when the boat begins to surf on a wave. This will take much of the wind pressure out of the sail and make for a gentler jibe. As the boat is accelerating, make a decisive turn with the wheel to cause the sail to jibe. And then trim it for the new course. Be ready on the wheel to counter rounding up as you come out of the jibe.
white water across the opening, which is uh, probably a little more than I expected. It was all over pretty quick, but there is a couple of other tips we can get out of this. To recap the final approach, although it all looked like white water, especially the port side which is reef, the main channel was visible by smoother seas caused by wind with tide. Obviously it was crucial to keep the boat in there. As the boat took off on the first surf, it was important to anticipate the broach, or a tendency to round up. All boats will try to do this to varying extents, and it's up to the helmsman to counteract it as early as possible. A few seconds late, and the loadings on the steering system increase exponentially, and can lead to breakage at a critical moment. Do let us know if you found this useful in the comments below and subscribe if you would like to see more. Blowholes. Hey Joe, look at the blowholes. Out the back. About five o'clock. As Joe was with us for two weeks, we were able to tailor the itinerary according to forecast winds. Nice to be inside now, honey. Bit smoother sailing, isn't it? The winds would stay out of the southeast for the first few days and then tend northeast for the remainder. Yeah. I think you're focused on your navigation following the deeper water route. Yeah. Heading up we towards. We want to go out. This is the route. This is the uh, point. 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 Right. What's your heading? What's your heading? I see, I see. Ah. We planned a fairly quick trip north to Highborn Quay, a hundred miles from Georgetown, before making use of the northeasterlies for a leisurely return. Perfect. The great thing about chart plotters, you can uh, see your old route where you've cut corners before and worked it all out, and then you can just follow your old course. That's one of the cuts there, just in the background. We're heading down that way. Towards our uh, Lee Stocking Island, right?
After covering 25 miles, we anchored off Williams Quay with our own private bay and enough of the day left for a snorkel. Any stingrays? Stingrays are over there. Joe quickly found the rays, sunning themselves in the shallows. There was quite a bit of life around the rocks, including this unwelcome invader. And this nice school of barjack. While they look like good eating, these guys are known carriers of ciguatera. These unusual sand volcanoes had us wondering what creature made them. If you know what it is, please let us know. It had been a pretty full day and happy hour was fast approaching. I'm going to... Okay. Oh, Joe's got the paper towels just in case we have any blood. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see your knife? It's the one I used to shave. Living dangerously. <laughs> Get in there. I'd go out of business if I was a <laughs> coconut milk guy. <laughs> Here, madam, you've got an hour. <laughs> That'll be a dollar. I have lots of stories, so <laughs> here's the chair, sit back and. <laughs> He was amazing. He did it all and he only had three fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. There we go. Now we're in the business. Hey, is that starting to look like a coconut or what? Should we just spike it with a screwdriver and, yeah. and then we can pour the juice? Coconut looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Was that worth the effort or what? I'm not drinking all of that. It took too long. Very small. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we get a bit out of that. We probably won't get much in the way of meat out of this, but we'll give it a go. Oh, actually. Not bad. Mm -hmm. that's a, that's not bad at all. Yeah, it tastes like the young meat, but not bad. Good action. Mm. 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 Okay. What are you going to make, make with that coconut oh. one? We're going to, um, since Joe's on this sort of um, prohibition drive, <laughs> we, <laughs> we've decided to, um, to make him a, a coconut rum. Drink with real green coconut milk. We think we found his weak spot. We'll see. Right. I'll try that. I'm mm. game for uh, coconut uh, rum. Coconut rum. Great. What is that? This is a lovely present from Melinda. Farewell present at La Belle. Thank you, Melinda. Aged rum, origin of St. Croix, if you can pronounce that. Melinda and Tony. Or as we say in Australia, St. Croix. With the fresh coconut milk. 40%. This is going to be a community cup like this. It's going to be like carva except without the spit. <laughs> it's going to be a healthy taste. Cheers. Uh, here's a Joe, our new guest. Finally breaking this, down his uh, sip. <laughs> A little pirate in me. 
<laughs> you go. You go, madam. Drink from the community carver bowl. Where do you put down that fire? Sweet, you. right? Sweet. Mm. Yeah, a little bit sweet. One more <laughs> drink. <laughs> and soon we'll be talking like ah. Pirate's favorite letter. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, no, they can stay with you now, Joe. Yeah. That's your baby, mate. <laughs> no, that's, not good. that's all I got. Wow. That's the first time I've had rum. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. That's oh, your yeah. first. Oh, yeah. my God. We're going to have all the teetotalers coming in. So, how much rum? I mean, it's like when you describe rum, what, mm. how diluted is, is did the it, coconut yeah. juice make this? Well, normally you'd have a finger, well, if you went to a bar, right, yeah. where they'd charge you some extortionate amount of money, you'd get a finger of rum, and they'd fill the rest with whatever. Oh, whatever, yeah. 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 Um, but, you know, know but when you're on Lucky cool. Fish, three fingers of rum, yeah. and that's it. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> well, everyone, we hope you enjoyed this episode. We'd like to give a special thank you to our patrons. It's because of patrons like you that make our productions sustainable, so please, if you haven't already, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a video and become part of the Lucky Fish story. Feel free to question, comment and give us a like and sub below. Until next time, thank you for watching.